Do you just sometimes feel like you're in an invisible matrix and it's just stopping you from being able to lose weight? Well, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to break through that matrix once and for all, and I'm going to take you step by step through it, even going through a book that I'm reading right now. And hey, in case you don't know me, my name is Jason Chaney, and I specialize in helping people transition to a plant-based diet to lose weight. But most importantly, I help them address their self-image when it comes to their food home so they never have to worry about gaining weight ever again. And so let's go ahead and get into it. And as you saw from the title, how to, uh, how to Escape the Matrix of Being Fat. And so I keep seeing this a lot on the internet and uh, people talking about it. Even here in Colombia, uh, when I see some Americans and stuff, they be talking about this like, oh, I've escaped the matrix, I escaped the matrix. But the truth is they haven't escaped the matrix. Like they don't know what a matrix truly is. They're thinking it's something like the movies where you're going into a whole nother, like you leave the land you're in, you're in a different matrix and you're in a new, you're no longer in the matrix. And the truth is we're always in a matrix. But so I'm gonna first actually identify, define what is a matrix so you can have a better understanding of it. And remember, it, the better you have an understanding of something, this is how you can start changing things. And so this is very key, and this is why I like to define words. I actually research a lot of words. This is the reason why. And so what is a ma what a matrix really is? <clears throat> a matrix is nothing more than a paradigm that controls our habitual behavior, and almost all of our behavior is habit habitual. If you uh, st study Bob Proctor, you will have heard this before, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it. And it's uh, also this. They have been, they have been, and they must be impl impl uh, implanted in our subconscious mind from birth. So the thing about it is a lot of people are acting like a matrix is something bad. A matrix is not bad. And the truth is, there's not just one matrix. There's tons of matrices, if that's the right word. And I'm going to uh, break some of them down for you. But they must be impl implanted in our subconscious mind from birth. These are the things that give us survival skills. These are the things that teach us how to walk. These are the things that teach us how to be a human being, how to go through life. And think about it. If you take a newborn baby, just give them, if a woman just gave birth to a baby and you go throw them in the wild, that baby is not going to survive because it doesn't have the matrices to teach it, to show it what to do. It's going to be looking for things to show it what to do, and it's not going to see another human being. This is why a matrix is very important. Like we have to stop thinking like, oh, the matrix is bad, the matrix is bad. You're always gonna be living in one form of, one form of matrix or another. And we all live in actual several matrices at the same time. And so the other thing about these, they are <clears throat> the, um, with the matrices. So these are not, uh, matrices, what that mean is they're not original thoughts or ideas that we Im imagined or desired for our own life. And all our matrices are not bad, like I said before. And so you have to think about this. How do you want your life to be? We do not have control on, how, on what we eat. Most of us never take control of that matrix of what we eat. And so just before I go deeper, let me just go ahead and break down just some of the most common matrices that we, that we actually have in society. And so you have an education matrix. You have a political matrix. You have society matrix. We have family matrix. We have a health matrix. We have an eating matrix. You may have an identity matrix. Like all of these are different matrices that we live under and they control our habitual behavior. Remember, almost all of our behavioral behavior is habitual. And if you're like, oh no, Jason, I, I have control of all of my habits. No, you don't. Do you get up and pee every morning at about the same time? Do you, first thing when you wake up for, uh, from bed, do you actually uh, go brush your teeth? Do you wash your face? Do you take a shower? There are certain things you do each and every day. And just to give you an example of this, like when I was in the military, uh, there was a soldier there, he didn't shower. And I was like, man, this is so weird. Who doesn't like to shower? Like, I don't understand this. But he had a matrix of where he didn't shower each and every day. He was someone who was from the woods. He lived a very isolated life. That wasn't something that was important. It wasn't part of his habitual habit. It didn't mean he was a bad person. He just had a different matrix than what I had and most of the other soldiers had. This is all that means. Even if you look at someone, you can look at anybody's habits. Like, let's just uh, take a negative habit, such as someone who does drugs. They have a matrix of being a drug user. That means their habitual nature habits are they're doing drugs on a consistent basis through constant space repetition. That's all that means. And so now that we've broken it down to that level, let me go to the actual book. And if you want to know what book I'm reading from, it's The Science of Getting Rich by Waddle D, uh, Wallace D. Waddles, W-A-T-T-L-E-S. Uh, if you want to get this book, you can get it on Kindle. You can get a physical copy. Then be like, Jason, I don't like to read. Then just get the audio book because I listen to it when I'm out and about. And also I read it when I'm at home. This is one of the books I do book study each and every day with it, plus uh, four or five other books. 
And so the first thing that uh, Wallace said is man is a thinking center and can originate thought. All of the forms that man fashions with his hands must first exist in his thought. He cannot shape a thing until he has thought that thing. And so now, as you know, I specialize in, in health and losing weight. That is all I focus on. He's talking about money here, but let's, let me uh, transition this into health and wealth. Do you believe you're healthy? Or do you believe you're suffering from whatever issue you, you're going through at this present state in time, this temporary being? But when you're dealing with certain things, like, if, like I tell people, if you see the title, it says, Escape the Matrix of Being Fat. Being is a state of being. That's all that is. I mean, it's temporary. You can change that. And so if you don't think in your mind that you can actually change that, you will never be able to change it because you believe in the paradigm or the, the matrix that you were given at birth. And if you're from the United States, you do not have a great matrix when it comes to health and losing weight. And the reason why I say this is for someone who went, was in the United States and left the United States, if you watch TV majority of your time, you, if you, well, let me just be honest. If you watch TV for more than three hours, you're getting about an hour of subconscious programming telling you you're sick. You're getting an hour of subconscious programming telling you you're fat. You're not beautiful. Uh, nobody wants to be with you. Oh, you got to be careful of women or men because they're just trying to use you. And all of these come through the TV shows you're watching and the commercials that you're watching each and every day. Plus, if you're in, driving in your car, if you spend an hour or two driving back and forth in traffic from work, you're getting programmed each and every day and you're, you don't know it. So you must take conscious control of that program. And so let's keep going on with what, more with what Wallace says. I have said that men get rich by doing things in a certain way. And in order to do so, men must become able to think in a certain way. And think about this. If you do not have the health or the, the healthy weight that you want, what do you think? Are you thinking in a certain way of someone who actually does have, uh, ha that's healthy? Are you thinking in the same way as someone who has a healthy weight, someone has been able to lose weight, keep it off, and not struggle with weight loss ever again? Like, if the answer is no, the thing is you're thinking in the exact opposite way, so you must change that thinking. And then he goes on to say, a, man, a man's way of doing things is the direct result of the way he thinks about things. This is very important. Because in this, let me go to you. When I was 550 plus pounds, I kept thinking about being, oh, I don't want to hit 600 pounds. I don't want to hit 600 pounds. And the only thing that happened was I ended up getting an industrial scale that stopped at 550 plus pounds, and I broke it. Like, I was getting to the place where of the thing that I didn't want because I was thinking about that each and every day. And until I changed my thoughts around that, I was able to actually start losing weight and keeping weight off. This is very key stuff. Because so many times we think like, oh, I just need to know what to do. You need to know what to think. You must think something that is going to get you to reach your goal. And that is very important. And then after that, Wallace says, to do things in a way you want to do them, you will have to acquire the ability to think the way you want to think. This is the first step towards getting rich. Now, I'm talking about health. He's talking about rich, being rich. I'm talking about your health and your health. If you want to be able to lose weight, you have to start thinking in ways that are going to get you to lose weight. And remember, if we go back to your matrix of health, your matrix of eating is not going to get you there. They were programmed by someone else. So you must go in and change that program. You must start thinking the thoughts that you want to have towards the goals that you want to have. If you, everything you've done up to this day has not got you to a place that you're happy with, then you must start changing the ways you're thinking. You must stop thinking the way that uh, your family think. You must stop thinking the way that your grandparents think. Most of us think, uh, the, most of the thoughts that uh, we have come from about four or five generations before. We don't even know the person that, that actually helped give us these uh, thoughts because we just keep doing generational things. This is how we have things such as generational welfare. Where those type of people that are having the kids think the exact same thing. They think like, oh, well, the government must take care of me. Oh, I can just get it, sit at home and get a check every month. This is very important and very key, especially if you take control of this with your health. And then after that, he says, every man has the natural and inherent power to think what he wants to think. But it requires for, far more effort to do so than it does to think the thoughts which are suggested by appearances. And now what he's saying there is it is harder for us to start believing in our own thoughts that we want to get to a healthy place. We want to get to a healthy body. We want to uh, not have so many lifestyle issues. We don't want to have the same issues we've been seeing everyone in our family uh, grow up with than it is 
to the things that we've been implementing than going against. It's harder to, to think against the matrix than just go with the matrix. It is easy. It was so easy when I was eating myself to 550 plus pounds and I was eating food that I thought I loved. But at the same time, I was hating myself each and every day while I was eating those foods. Until I started realizing those things, I started changing the way I thought around eating. And I redesigned my matrix for eating. And then after that, let me go into this. This is a really good one because this is where uh, I read this every day, this paragraph right here. To look upon the appearance of disease will produce the form of disease in your own mind. I remember when I believed that, oh, I have high blood pressure. Oh, I have to have a CPAP machine to breathe at night. Oh, I have to have all of these different things. I believe that. Those are the thoughts in my mind. And, and then he say, and ultimately in your body. And so because I was believing these things that, oh, these are generational things. I have to end up getting this eventually. I started physically manifesting it in my body, but at a faster time and a lot worse. And then he said, Un unless you hold the thought of the truth, which is that there is no disease. It is only an appearance, meaning it is only a temporary state. Yes, you can be sick today, but you don't have to be sick tomorrow. Yes, you can be fat today, but you don't have to be fat next week. You can change these things each and every day. And the reality is health. When I started implant implanting the, the paradigms in my mind, the matrix of I am only a healthy being. I am skinny. I am at the weight that I want to be. I can walk again. I don't need to wear a cane. I don't need a CPAP machine to breathe at night anymore. This is when I started getting the results. Like so many times people want to say like, oh, you're lucky. Oh, it's a miracle. It's not luck and it's a miracle. I started thinking a very specific way. And when I started doing those certain, thinking that certain way, I was able to get the results that I wanted. And you can too. And so then how do you actually change your matrix? Like I actually took notes because I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't planning on talking about this today. This wasn't even the, I was going to be talking about protein and supplementation stuff. But as I was doing my book study, like this really hit hard, hit hard on my heart. And I was like, okay, I must have to do this because this is something people really need to know because it's about the mindset. Like you just, if you just focus on, Oh, I'm just eating. I'm just eat healthy. I'm eat healthy. You're not going to eat healthy because you're going to go back to your matrix. You can only, and so and the reason being with that is there's only very specific ways you can change your matrix. The first one is you must have acceptance of ignorance. And what that means is you just have to accept that you don't have adequate understanding on how to achieve your goal. And so what this, let me break it down to you. The way I started getting healthier, the way I started improving my health and improving my life, I started admitting that, you know what, I don't know nothing about being healthy. I don't know what healthy eating look like. I don't know what a healthy lifestyle look like. I don't even know what a healthy weight look like. And once I started accepting that ignorance, I started finding my, un, getting more understanding. I started finding people outside of the circles that I'm used to, people outside of my matrix. And this is how I started developing an understanding on health. And when I started getting into it, I just, I was just started devouring it. I was just like, okay, I gotta know more. I gotta know more, I gotta know more. And I was spending all of my time doing this. The second thing is you must have constant space repetition. And what this means is what can you do every day to get your get one step closer to your goal? Like when I was when I was at 550 plus pounds and my goal was to get at 250 pounds, I wasn't trying to figure out like how can I get 250 pounds right now? I was just trying to figure out how can I get this scale to no longer say plus? How can I get this scale to give me an accurate number? Like I focused on that one step at a time. And as I was doing those steps, it started building momentum. It was like a rock going downhill. And then all of a sudden I looked up, I'm 235 pounds. Like this is how I was able to do this. And then the third way is, the third thing you must do also is have a proper goal. Goals are ego driven, meaning our ego is competitive. Like if you try to set a goal that isn't competitive, that's something your, your ego already know you can do, you're not gonna reach it because your ego will be like, okay, whatever, that, that, that's not important. And so it must feel unachievable. And let me explain to you what, how I did that. So I tell you, like, I was, when I, um, if you've been watching my videos over the time, like, I tell you, like, when I went and did a sleep study, they told me that I was one of the worst cases they ever seen. And, you know, if you've if you ever done a sleep study, they tell you, oh, you got to be there all night and all of that. They told me, they woke me up after an hour. And they was like, Mr. Cheney, you don't need to be here anymore. They gave me a machine just to take home because they was afraid that I might die in my sleep. Because they was like, you are not, you are the worst case that I've, we've seen. You are not, you're barely breathing. You, like, they said like, I was, um, I was stopped breathing over a hundred times, like within less than an hour. Like, this is how crazy this was. 
And so I had a belief and I had the thought in my mind that I had to use a CPAP machine for the rest of my life. But as I started uh, applying these things and I started changing my mindset around what it meant to be healthy, I was like, you know what, let me go crazy. And I didn't know all this stuff in the beginning. Let me be honest with you, I had to break this down. I didn't know about paradigms, Uncle Bob. I didn't know none of this stuff. I was doing this unconsciously. And I was literally being driven by my subconscious mind, which is your spirit. And so I started doing these things. And then as I was doing these things with my weight, I was like, let me try to see if I can do this around having a CPAP machine. I didn't want to have a CPAP machine anymore. I wanted to be able to sleep next to my wife without uh, having this machine. You know, if I roll over too far, the machine unplugged and I can't breathe. And I was also afraid of just drop being dead in the bed next to her and she had to wake up today. And so the first thing I did is I set the goal up. I am not going to be able to use a C- I'm not going to use a CPAP machine in six months. And I was terrified. Because if you've ever experienced a uh, sleep apnea or you're uh, dealing with it now, you know when you stop breathing in your sleep and you just wake up and you just feel that gut wrench, like you know you, can, you have no air in your body, it is terrifying. It's scary. And so I set that goal and then I started doing research like, okay, what are some things that can help me do better, help get uh, better oxygen flow in my body? So I started doing breath work. And so I started breathing in each and every day. I started doing deep breaths, all these different things. People thought I was crazy when I was doing this in Panama. I was starting to go on walks, like just to get my body moving, just start to get the lungs moving, get my pushing myself. But also, I started doing a high antioxidant, uh, antioxidant-rich diet. Like I started getting rid of some of the oxidative stress that was in my body. And then three months down the line, I was able to get off a CPAP machine, something that I was told I would never be able to do again. Like I was supposed to be able to be using a CPAP right now to this day. But also, more importantly, I saw myself on a cruise ship. Like, we used to cruise, and I saw myself just enjoying the cruise. Uh, Me and my wife just going to bed. We're just sleeping in the bed, and I'm sleeping next to her as a normal person. I'm not wearing a CPAP machine. I started visualizing and imaging those things, and then it came true. Like, this is how powerful this is if you actually start doing it. And what I didn't realize what I was doing is I went into an ultra-egoic state. And this is where you fuse your proper goal into your subconscious. And so when you do that into your subconscious mind, you're slowly starting to tear down the matrix that you've been born into. So like I was tearing down the medical matrix that was telling me, oh, this is what health is for you from here on out. And I started recreating the matrix of what I wanted my health to be. And this is how I'm looking at you today where I'm looking good. I feel good. I can actually buy clothes off the rack. And if you ever been someone who wore a 7X or 8X like me, like that's very fucking amazing. Like. You know, like being able to just go buy something off the rack and I'm in a foreign country where people are naturally smaller than Americans and I can still wear their size clothes like that is a miracle for me because I remember being going buying those big ass 7X, 8X shirts and they look like a moomoo. I remember feeling uncomfortable even going into the big and tall store because I knew all the shirts that I wanted, they were too small for me. We're talking about 4X, 5X, which most people be like, oh, man, that should be easy for you to fit into. They were too small for me. Like, this is how important this is. And if you start taking control of your, uh, actually taking control of your conscious mind and stop focusing on what the, everyone on the outside is telling you and focus on what you actually want, you will be able to get your, your goals. This is how, like I tell people, if you do exactly what I say do, you are guaranteed to reach your goals because you're taking the action each and every day to get one step closer. And remember, if you saw, one, how do you actually change your matrix? Constant space repetition. You must take one step to get closer to your goal each and every day. I can't take that step for you. Your spouse can't take it for you. Your kids can't take it for you. Only you can take that step. And so now you just have a decision to make. Are you ready to take that step? Or are you just going to keep letting everyone else, the matrix of the world, keep guiding you to where you don't want to be? And so I hope you got some value from this. I know it might be a little bit long, but I felt like this was very important. And this was really great for Free Coaching Friday. Because if you start taking care of this, you will start. You can apply this not only to your health. You can apply it to your finances. You can apply it to your parenting, your relationship, everything. Like it's all about what do you really want and think about it and focus on it. And you need to start feeling it because wherever you are right now is just a temporary state of being. Like even right now, I'm in South America, uh, Colombia, South America. This is a temporary state, temporary state of being for me. I'm temporary here. I'm not going to be here the rest of my life. In fact, I'm going to be leaving here pretty soon. Most people don't know that. Uh, And so, like, really think about that. Wherever you are in your life right now, it's just temporary. You can get to wherever you want to be. Just go one step closer to it. If you want to be able to breathe better, just take one step closer by taking deep breaths each and every day, doing some breath work. If you want to get a little bit smaller, just take one step every day and just 
get, to get closer to it and just eat something a little healthier. Just eat an apple today to start out. Drink an extra glass of water. Like this is how simple these steps are being. If you do these little simple uh, steps that are very easy, it will start breaking down the bigger things that look like a mountain for you. And you'll start seeing it ain't nothing but a little pebble you can hold in your hand. And so if you like this type of content, make sure you hit the like button. If you know someone that can use value from this, make sure you hit the uh, share button and share that to them. And if, you, if it's a little too long for you, if you're watching me live, just go ahead and uh, just look up a, uh, the link up above or below, depending where it is on your screen, and just subscribe to the YouTube channel. And you can watch it there, and you can actually listen to it while you're driving in the car. Start reprogramming your paradigms, these matrices that we have, while you're doing other tasks. And one of the ways I love doing it is when I'm out and about, I listen to books all day long. And start listening to these type of videos, listen to other things that are going to help, reach, help you reach your goal. So I hope you have a great Friday, stay supercharged, and I'll see you Monday.